Welcome back. Deputy Secretary of Defense Kathleen Hicks says one goal of the new replicator initiative is driving artificial intelligence innovation in the Pentagon. Hicks says speed in innovation is critical to stay ahead of the country's potential adversaries. Rob Carey is president of Cloudera Government Solutions. He's former deputy chief information officer at DOD. Rob, welcome. It's great to talk to you. This revolution that we're seeing across government, what should people be doing inside the building and in civilian agencies to really prepare for what's ahead of us? Um, uh, learn. Yeah. So embrace um, this technology. There have been three words in IT in the last 25 years that have had this profound of a change on the landscape. One is cyber. If you recall, if you're old like me, you remember it was information assurance, it was just something that somebody on the staff did, then it became cyber, it became forefront of everyone's thoughts. Then came cloud. So now everybody, the new storage compute model is cloud computing, Vivek Kundra 2009, cloud first, so all, all, everything is now shifting, and now it's AI. So what is, you know, AI is that artificial intelligence. There are tools that are out there that you can play with today. You can go on ChatGPT, other language learning models, and figure out what to do with this thing. But to harness it for actual use, for support of mission, is really about learning and understanding so that you can accelerate your mission as uh, DepSecDef is desired. What does one do? look for, what does one need to learn in order to be an effective practitioner to, to recognize opportunities to use AI? So it sounds silly, but, but uh, Francis, the first thing is, do you know what problem you're trying to solve? I mean, that, that sounds trivial, but, but it's not. And then this is all about the data. So the data associated with that problem set, right? Organize it, clean it, and then most importantly, trust it. Right. This is a big deal. To, do you trust the data? You know, I've said this many times, uh, maybe even on your show. You know, we trust everything that shows up on our computer screen. Right? It's real. It's live. It's good. Well, that's not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. So you must trust the data that you're going to now put into a vector database to actually implement uh, AI algorithms to produce a mission result that is repeatable and gives you the answers that you want. Mm -hmm. So the, the idea is really to take a step back. And, and, and then move forward with a plan. You can't jump into this. It, people sometimes think that because I can get on ChatGPT in five minutes, and I did that. I actually, I, I printed some uh, uh, questions out here and it just keeps going. Mm -hmm. and, and the answers are, I give them a C plus, right? So, so you can't just take that and run with it. You actually have to take that going, I need to tweak something. Mm -hmm. That's the, it kind of gets at the core of the differentiator that people keep talking about, which is this is not going to replace people. AI is going to, uh, to be a tool for people to use to do their jobs better. That, that's exactly right. In, in my mind, you know, what is the most powerful force on earth is a machine-enabled human, right? Now we have a more powerful version of that that can be brought to bear to solve complex problems. Um, are there places where lower level um, activities, maybe in cyber, that you could run and screen something out through the machine? Yes, you could. But you have to think the other side is, I now can take a really informed man-machine interface plus a human to solve the problem. So mm -hmm. that we're now at another level of capability, which is, I think, so cool. How have. does one go about doing what you're suggesting, which is analyzing mission need and then applying potential solutions through artificial intelligence rather than, oh, let's go get some AI because AI sounds cool and people are doing <laughs> a lot with it. But how does one look at a problem and think of a potential solution? Oh this is something where artificial intelligence might be a, a viable application. So, so you have to study, uh, a, a define the problem and its scope, find the data a, appropriate to that problem, determine a, a language learning model, either build one or use one, and then, you, then starts the work, right, to then perfect it. Um, generative AI is all the rave. AI in the form of machine learning has been around for a while, but now generative AI, I can speak to something, I get an interface back out. So this is about start, 
and then learn and get better at it. And, and the people that understand this, data scientists, data engineers, are like gold hen's teeth. They just aren't laying around on every corner. And so once you, once, and they're starting to come out of colleges now, which is very cool, um, but, but there's not enough of them. Mm -hmm. Just like in cyber, when cyber became a thing, everybody wanted to have a cyber engineer. Well, they didn't, they didn't there weren't any laying around. So they're, they're now coming out of universities with degrees and understand this. Uh, so, so I think that the DOD, the other agencies, they really have to sit and, and work on this, perfect it, and then move forward. Rob Carey, it's always great to talk to you. Thanks very much for your time. Thanks for having me. You can read more about AI in the Defense Department and the Replicator Initiative in particular at FedGovToday.com. Up next, data is at the heart of modernizing the government's people process. FedGovToday with Francis Rose continues in a moment.